Good morning. According to my personally kept service records, my last oil change on the Lexus was at 220,387 miles. I wanted to get the next one done before we hit 5,000 from there, so let's see what we're sitting at. 225,264. Looking good. So if you didn't catch it by the title of this video or the introduction that I just gave, I will be changing the oil on the Lexus today. Looking at the owner's manual here, you can see it asks for SAE 5W30 synthetic. You flip to the back, it says that it takes 6.5 quarts of oil with the filter. So that's what I'm going to be putting in. Let me show you what I got. For my Lexus, I will be using Mobile One Truck and SUV 5W30 full synthetic oil. To filter the new oil, I picked up a Bosch 3330 oil filter. To catch the old oil, I got a 7 quart drain pan. To put the new oil in, I got a half pint funnel. Now you don't have to get this, but I just wanted to replace it just to play it safe, and it was less than a dollar or two on Rock Auto. But I got a new engine oil drain plug. Comes with the gasket included, so I'm going to replace that while I'm at it. And for the tools to make this all possible, I have my DeWalt Mechanics tool set. Once again, not mandatory, but I also like to have some paper towels for cleanup. And I have this little container from Blackstone Oil Analysis. I'll explain more what that is towards the end of the video. But that is everything I'll be using today. Let's get started. Now, if I'm doing any kind of repair on a vehicle or maintenance that involves a drain and fill of a certain fluid, this is what I always like to do first. Pop the hood, get her opened up. And over here on the right side of the engine block, you can see that there's a little oil cap right here for filling it back up. Just open it up, make sure it comes off easily, and then put it back on. So to first look, it might seem pretty pointless to just take the cap off and put it back on. However, like I said, I like to do that whenever I'm doing any kind of drain and fill maintenance. The reason for that is, let's just say, supposedly you drain all of your engine oil out. Drain it out, take off the filter and change it, and then you go to refill it. You try to take off the cap, it doesn't come off. It gets stuck, it breaks, something happens, but you can't put new oil in it. Now you've got a car with a broken cap on it that you can't even remove, and you can't take it to the dealership or the shop to get it fixed because you don't have any oil in your engine. That's the way I look at it. I always like to make sure that I can fill it up after I drain it, and I like to make sure that I can fill it before I drain it, so... Anyways, let's hop underneath. Now for reference, I'm just laying on the ground right here, right in front of the bumper. You can see all this rust right here. Pardon the state of Maryland, they love to abuse vehicles by oversalting the roads. But at least on mine, I have a bolt right here, and a bolt right here that holds in the skid plate. I don't know if there's more, a couple have been missing over the years, and a couple have been replaced. But for me, I at least just have these two. So you're going to want to take them out. For me, they're 12 millimeter bolts. I assume they should be the same for you, so I'll pop them out real quick. 12 millimeter socket right here. Gonna want to flip the loose and then just take them out. Once it gets to a certain point, you can just hand loosen them. That's what I usually like to do. There's one. There's two. And you'll see. You'll see that there's two more that I forgot about. On top of those two, I forgot that there's two more. You can see one right where my finger is, and then the same one is up through this hole right here. So you're gonna wanna take those two out. Now I'm using a small socket extension right now, but I'm gonna work my way up and then just loosen it through here. Loosening it by hand. Got small fingers so I can stick them up there. And then there's the other one. Now like I said, that leaves us with one more up there. I'm gonna back up the camera so you can kind of get some reference for where that is. It's on the left side, at least from where I am right now. It's closer to the passenger side wheel well. Little hole up there. You just want to kind of stick it up there and then loosen it up. Once you got it up there, it's just like loosening any other bolt. Just kind of break it loose and then keep it going. And like I said, this is the last one holding it in, so you kind of got to watch out. Got to prop my arm up here, just so the whole skid plate is starting to fall loose. And the whole thing just fell down, so there you go. That's how you get that out. Now you're going to want to take your skid plate out. Just kind of dragging it out like so. And there you go. Like I said, you can see just how rusted that thing is. You gotta love Maryland salt on the roads. Now once you're under here, you can see that everything that the skid plate was covering, you just got a whole bunch of hoses, your sway bar, and of course your oil filter. 
Now it seems that I labeled the other one that I put on here. I replaced this on December 3rd of 2020. Today's date is May 27th of 2021. Now of course for any sort of maintenance or repair that you'll be doing under your car, you can opt to use jack stands and a good jack. However, I can fit underneath of here without it, so I decided that it wouldn't be worth it to actually get that out and go through the hassle of all that. But yeah, pretty tight under here. Just hit my elbow really hard on there. Hit my funny bone. Didn't feel too great. So, just a forewarning if you're going to be under here, it is pretty tight. However, you can see my old oil filter right here, like I said, 12-3-2020. Moving further back, you can see the other skid plate, which is right here. Now, I think that some have a cap right here. Mine does not. But if you do, you just peel back that rubber cap, and you can see that the oil pan right here for your engine oil is right there, and the drain plug is right here. Now your oil pan bolt size up there is 14 millimeters. You're going to want to get your socket wrench, your 14 millimeter bit, an extension for the socket wrench, and your oil drain pan. All right, now I've got my oil pan underneath of that hole that I was telling you about earlier. I have my 14 millimeter socket wrench with the socket, and then I have my little test tube for Blackstone Laboratories that I'm going to be filling up. Now before I did this test, I drove around a bit just to get my oil a bit warm. It has less viscosity once it's actually warmed up, so it flows a lot smoother and you can get more out and you don't have as much residue inside. But keep in mind that if you choose to do this, it's going to be quite significantly warmer, so just a proper forewarning if you're going to do that. Anyways, I'm going to fit my wrench underneath. Kind of going to feel around, feel until I find the bolt up there. There we go, I'm locked on, and you're going to start cranking it loose. You'll know once it's loose because oil will start pouring out. And it should be loose, there we go. Now your oil is coming out. I'm going to give it a few seconds. I'm going to reach under, fill the bottle real quick. Ooh, yes, that is quite hot, but there you go. Draining out, and here's the old bolt. Quite a bit of oil in there. I'll let that finish out for a second. I went and I got my new drain plug. I cleaned off my ratchet with some paper towels and I went inside and washed my hands real quick. So now I'm going to get underneath and I'm going to tighten this bolt into where the other one was. If you're using the same bolt, you just use that one. I can see it right here. I'm tightening it on by hand. Now it is in all the way. There's no oil dripping out. Went around, grabbed my ratchet. There we go, I can feel it locked on. Tightening it down a bit. You don't want it too tight. You also don't want it too loose. I don't know what the proper factory torque rating is for how tight you want that. You just kind of want to get it to the point where it's not going to leak out any oil. You'll be able to hold the oil pressure, but not also be over tightened. There we go. That's not super tight, but it feels good to me. It feels like it'll hold. So to me at least, this is one of the hardest parts of changing the oil in any vehicle. It's getting the oil drain pan out without actually spilling any oil. You can see there's already a few oil spills there and there. That's honestly one of the hardest parts to me. I'm gonna try to slide under and ever so slowly drag it out. And I'm already making a mess. It does not wanna come out. Wow, that's not good. I need a bigger drain pan. Now usually with my old oil, I like to pour it into my oil bottles that I empty out. So once I start putting oil back in the engine, I'll put it in there. However, I still have yet to take out the filter. There's inevitably going to be some oil that comes out of there. I just don't know how much and I don't want it to overflow again. So I got a milk carton out of the recycling bin. I'm going to use the funnel to pour the old oil into there. That's about as much as it'll hold. Now your next step is back underneath the car. You'll see your oil filter right here. It's right by your sway bar and your frame. So you just kind of want to unscrew that. Unscrews and screws back on like anything else would. You can get an oil filter wrench for this. 
I've never used an oil filter wrench and I've never had a problem without using one. So I'm just gonna take it off now. Now once again, I just took my oil drain pan and centered it underneath of my oil filter. So I'm just gonna unscrew that now and collect whatever oil comes out of there. Old filter right here. It's gonna have quite a bit of oil in it, so just dump that out. Then you can see up there the housing where it normally goes. Dripping out. I'll let that continue dripping out. Now I grab my new filter. Like I mentioned, it is a Bosch 3330 premium oil filter. You can see right now it is completely dry inside. And I did date it with today's date just to be able to tell in the future when I last did my oil change if I don't feel like checking my service records. Now before you put it on, you're going to want to put a seal of oil around the outside of the housing just to create a firmer seal. Helps not only lubricate it, but also make sure that it can go on tighter and prevent dry rotting in the future. I'm going to dip my finger in the old oil right here. I'm just going to rub a little seal right there. If you can, new oil is usually better, but I'm just using the old oil because I have it right here and I don't feel like sticking my fingers in the new oil and contaminating it. Now once you've done that, you'll just take your filter. Put it back up the same way you took the other one out and screw it in. Now once again it is a lot easier to get this in tighter if you have an oil filter wrench but you also don't want to get this in overly tight because you want to be able to get it off in the future. I am using both arms just to get a tight seal. Doesn't feel like it wants to go on too much more and that feels pretty tight to me. Now I had mentioned paper towels earlier. I like to clean up wherever oil spilled down. Just clean up the seals and everything around it. When you take it on a test drive later, just to make sure there's no leaks or anything, I always like to make sure that everything's cleaned up so that if I see excess oil, I know that it's not just residual and I know that it's actually fresh oil that's been coming out. So I'm taking the paper towel. I'm gonna clean up here and then underneath where the oil drain plug was. Now that we are all cleaned up underneath, I'm going to start filling it with new oil. But before I do that, I wanna clean out my old oil filter just because it's full of old oil. Don't want old oil and dirt and contaminants getting inside my oil, especially if it's brand new. So I'm going to clean that out and then I'll be right back out. Now once you're done cleaning your filter, you want to be sure that there are no contaminants inside. I cleaned out mine with soap and water and then made sure that there was nothing left in there. Now once you have your oil lid that you know for a fact will come off, you want to loosen that, take it off, stick your funnel inside. And then just begin filling it up with fresh oil from there. Six and a half quarts for this. We're on the final bottle now, so you're going to want to put in about half of that. A little more than half left. You can tell by the gauge on the side of the bottle. And that's a little more than half, so that'll be good. Now you're going to want to take the funnel right back out. Put the oil cap back in. Screw it on, make sure it's not threaded wrong. Give it a few clicks. And then you know that it is tight enough. So over here I have all of my empty oil bottles, the box that it came in, and my excess oil. So I'm going to use the funnel to put that excess oil into some of these empty bottles. You see the gauge on the side filling up, that's what I'm looking at right now. Perfect.
Now I pack my stuff into two piles right here. I have my empty oil bottles right here. And then I have my oil filter, cardboard box, paper towels. Those are going to trash and recycling. And then I have all my used oil right here, which I'm going to take and dispense of properly. Here's all the stuff that I need to clean up. That still has half a quart of oil in it, so I'm going to hold on to that. Need to wash that out. And before I put the skid plate back on, I'm going to start up the engine and make sure that I don't see any leaks. And assuming that I don't see any leaks, I'll go take her on a test drive. And then once that's all good, then we'll proceed from there. Keys are in the ignition. Let's start her up. Sounds good. Sounds like she's running right so far. Looking right now, I don't see anything more around that oil filter than when I cleaned it off. And on the bolts, I don't know if you can see it in the back, that silver shiny thing. I'm not seeing any shine back there either. So, so far, it's been idling for about five minutes, just sitting still. I'm not seeing any leaks. So I'm going to go take it for a quick, I guess, five, ten minute test drive. Come back, see if she's leaking. If it's leaking, then we'll diagnose anything from there. If not, we'll just throw the skid plate back on and call it a day. All right, well, I just got back from the little test drive. Let's see how she's looking. Haven't looked yet, so we're seeing this for the first time together. Hopping underneath. Seems pretty clean under here. Actually, that I think that's a little drip from where I had my hand earlier. And then in the back, I can kind of see it on the angle through here. It looks pretty clean. I just checked. It does seem that that was just residual oil that was on my hands when I put on the oil filter, so I'm not worried about that. Anyways, I'm going to pull the engine oil dipstick, wipe it off real quick, and make sure that we're good there. Kind of hard to see, but... It looks like we are good. Once you've inspected and made sure there's no leaks, I want to put the skid plate back on. I'm going to put mine back on now, same way I took it off. skid plate is back on. Just remember that the oil filter is right up there. So if you want to check for leaks in the next week or so, like I usually do after changing my oil, I always like to look up there just to make sure and look for any leaks around that area. Now one of the last things that you want to do is reset your maintenance required light. That light is on this side of the dash. If I turn on the key right now without starting the engine, you'll see it on the right side and you'll see that I have my odometer right there. Now while you have it on the odometer setting, you want to make sure that your key is completely off, keep it in the ignition. Press down on the little odometer trip reset button right there, and then turn the key, but don't actually start the engine. Continue to hold the button. You'll see that the light is blinking rapidly. It'll go on, and then it'll turn off. And just like that, you've reset the light. And as far as changing the oil in the GX470 goes, that is it for this video. I hope if you were here to find out how to do it, that was helpful to you. If not, just thanks for tuning in and watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And last but certainly not least, I forgot to mention one thing. I made to mention it towards the beginning of the video and about halfway through of Blackstone Oil Laboratories. Ooh, that's dirty. Anyways, that's a company that I use and have used, I guess, once for the Lexus and once for the Explorer. I found out about it while I was on Facebook one day. You can take an oil sample from your engine oil. I think they do transmission fluid, maybe differentials too. I don't know for sure, but you can go to their website for more. But you mail in a little sample of your oil like I took earlier. You just mail it out. It's a prepaid little thing that they send you. And they get back to you within about a month or so. They give you an analysis of how your engine is doing, what your oil looks like, what contaminants have gotten in. So it's cool to know things like that. So I might do a video on that later. I'll send that in. One more thing I forgot to mention that I wanted to before I ended this video. If you watched my most recent video on the Ocean City trip that Sam, Tyler, and I took, you'll notice that my air conditioner went out. I just figured I'd provide an update on that while I'm making this video. So underneath of the hood, it used to make a loud screeching noise when I'd hit this button. <laughs> Now it doesn't, it'll just say max cold. Vents will turn on, and then it will say check air conditioner as you can see above. 
If I go to the settings, you'll just see that the AC light is blinking and it won't work. So right down here where my hand is going is the air compressor. You can see right now if I try to spin it, the outside of it, it just does not want to move. It's kind of hard to see, but see if you can hear the audio it's making. Really hard to record that. I don't know if you could even hear any of that, but it's just making kind of a grinding noise whenever I try to spin it. I think the clutch is seized. I think I'm gonna to have to replace the AC compressor, and I don't know if I'm gonna do that. If you take a look at the front, you can kind of see if there's a little bit of refrigerant still left in the lines. So I don't know if it ran out or if it has enough in it. I think it is enough, but the compressor just seems completely seized. I might try putting a little bit more of the refrigerant inside of it, but regardless, I think that it's seized, and I think that there's no fixing it unless I'm to replace the whole compressor. I don't know if I want to do that. I don't know if I'm going to do that. I don't think it's worth the money. It's got 225,000 miles on it. And my uncle who owned this before me said that he had to replace the entire system twice. So I don't want to have to do that for the third time and then maybe a fourth after that. Regardless, there's an update on that. Anyways, like I said, that'll be the end of this video. So thanks for tuning in again. I think I'm going to change the mower's oil later. So that'll probably be the next video if you see that. And it was done today as well. But thanks again for watching.